And welcome back to another episode of Concerns Me, Boy. Uh, it's me, Joe. And we're here to talk about some interesting gaming news. So this is something that's been going on for a while. Uh, I didn't know it was starting to come into the States, but as we talked about before, it was about, it's, this is involving the Xbox Activision Blizzard um, situation. So in, in, in the past, we talked about how the UK has this sort of uh, not okay idea of what this means for, you know, the market, the fact that Xbox is planning to buy a big corporation like that of Activision and Blizzard, especially since they recently just got um, Bethesda, which was how much money again? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but it was a lot of money. It was a lot of money. That that was a lot of money. And so now the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission, has uh, come in and, you know, start, you know, getting on the Xbox as well. Uh, but here's the funny thing. A lot of stuff has come out because of this trial. And it's a lot of stuff that makes Sony look a little weird. A little scum. Not scummy. I wouldn't say scummy. Uh, I would probably, the word you would probably use is hypocritical. Yes, very hypocritical. And it's also kind of interesting is to see how well for one it's kind of funny seeing these uh you know these terms like console wars being used in the legal sense and it meaning absolutely nothing uh yeah because uh i believe the sec or or, or it's called the federal trade commission who yeah. is like the main body of the in the united states that uh deals with all out of these like corporate mergers and this and that uh, they're, like, they're having more like an, uh, not necessarily a trial, I think. It's more of a, like, hey, mm-hmm. listen, we're just kind of investigating, but we're playing it out a bit in court. Uh, sort of like, hey, here's the FTC's argument, mm-hmm. uh, in front of a, basically a neutral judge. Of like, hey, this is an arg- yeah. argument of, like, it's a very neutral judge. of, yeah, why this deal shouldn't go down, and obviously Microsoft on the other end, like, argument of, like, Hey, now this is why we should be allowed to make this merger, blah mm-hmm. blah blah. You know, with the, uh, you know, hearing it out and like obviously, I think the result of you know this whole thing will be seeing whether or not the deal can proceed forward yeah. or not, kind of thing, right? And yeah, like you know, much like an like yeah a trial, you know, there's evidence presented and various things. Are shown off. Heck, we found out about some things that technically aren't really necessarily a part of like the whole debate, or rather, you know, the whole like. But this, but this is where we're talking about where Sony is kind of seeing hypocritical, and that's kind of like the idea of what this episode's gonna be about is just aspects of this trial. Uh, we're obviously not gonna go through the whole trial. There's like mountains of videos and commentate commentators articles that talk about it, which I do recommend you guys go out and read because because. Uh, They'll probably be more thorough than we would ever be. Uh, but essentially, the idea is that Sony is, is kind of screwing over Microsoft in ways that seems very um, anti-consumer. Yeah, there is there is a bit of that. Um, basically, a lot of... Um, Notes have been taken out. Well, basically, you know, like, a lot of the FTC's argument is that, hey, listen, um, you know, Xbox owning Activision Blizzard will allow them to, like, say, have access, you know, Call of Duty being the big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they could potentially make that console exclusive, and that's not right, you know, all this and stuff. But as we've uh, learned through the uh, this whole trial injunction thing... Um, yeah, like, well, we've learned, yeah, that there have been, sec- like, not necessarily secret, but, like, dealings that Sony and PlayStation have done with various third-party developers to ensure that uh, games either get a time limited release to PlayStation or just straight-up stay PlayStation exclusive. Mm. You know, I mean, heck, we kind of see it now. Like, heck, uh, Final Fantasy sixteen is, as far as I'm aware... Uh, PlayStation, PlayStation exclusive. Yes. 
And there have been other cases of that happening even before, like, the PlayStation 5 showing up. I mean, Street Fighter 5 was PlayStation exclusive. Which, I remember the, the reason why is because the PlayStation offered a, sh a certain number of, mo of money for them to, you know, help help them sort of finish making the game in exchange of making it an exclusive only on PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, granted it's available on PC as well, but when we, when we say exclusive, we sort of mean console exclusivity. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, and heck, uh, PlayStation themselves had had a deal with Activision Vision. Activision Blizzard beforehand uh, during the PS4 era of just straight up, hey, Call of Duty gets extra little bits of content, you know, only on PlayStation. Yeah. You know, and we saw a lot of that. I mean, heck, uh, the Avengers game, which is a multi platform game, got exclusive Spider Man DLC on PlayStation and nowhere else. And a lot of people would say, well, that's because, you know, Sony owns the, uh, the Spider-Man IP. They don't. But they don't. <laughs> they only own the, the film. film rights, yes. And when you learn about, it's more of Sony talking with Marvel to get mm -hmm. additional, like, they pretty much like, like, hey, we'll pay you extra money so that you can have Spider-Man on our console. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of like a, it, it feels like a kind of a weird thing to me. Yeah. That, like, it seems like Sony really, really likes to, like, try to... Make it seem as though they own Spider-Man, even though they don't. They just own the film rights. But, you know, it's just trying to, like... It's like yeah, one of those yeah. weird, like, kind of things yeah. in the background where I'm just mm -hmm. like... It feels like Sony just wants to own Spider-Man, but they can't. But mm -hmm. they do all these things to make it seem like they own Spider-Man. And it's funny, because they bring up the fact that... And we already knew this, right? Because uh, we, we knew that uh, Bethesda... Or uh, different branches of Bethesda are making an Indiana Jones game. Indiana Jones is owned by Lucasfilm Works, which is owned by Disney. Yes. And and part of the conversation that was happening during this trial was like, oh, you guys are planning on making that an exclusive, aren't you? And it's like, well, you get, well, and Xbox is, you know, basically saying, well, to be fair, they did the same thing with Spider-Man. Well, yeah, and that's the thing, too. Um, even then, like, we didn't even know about that Indiana Jones game becoming exclusive until this trial and all this information come out, which is like the sort of like the interesting thing, is that there is stuff coming out about this trial. It's much like uh, that investor call that uh, Warner Brothers did like a couple months back about like, oh yeah, we're releasing the the Suicide Squad game, and also there's gonna be a new Mortal Kombat game, you know that sort of thing. Where it's, it's like, like, wait, what? Yeah, suddenly like announcing stuff that hasn't been announced yet, yeah. and being like, wait, what? <laughs> so this is one of those like. Oh, yeah, the Indiana Jones game that we've been sort of developing in the background that uh, Bethesda's been sort of working on. Yeah, that's uh, we're most like, uh, that's definitely going to be uh, Xbox exclusive, and we had to talk to Disney about it, and they're like, yeah, all right, fine, that's good, yeah, that makes sense. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, you know, there's obviously, like, a lot of these things of, uh, you know, the arguments being made of, like, oh, well, uh, for us at Bethesda, it's actually kind of easier for us to work on just a single console so that way we don't split our dev team into do, working on two separate uh, versions of a game and stuff, you mm -hmm. know? So, like, it kind of helps us out a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's likely a lot of these interesting sort of uh, discussions. And... I mean, speaking of that, too, there, there was also this aspect of uh, finding out that... Because uh, another game that they brought up uh, was also Minecraft. Minecraft being kind of like a game that should be an Xbox exclusive, but they were just nice enough to be like, not nah, everybody gets to play this game. Well, to be fair, it was multi-platform before Microsoft yeah, yeah, yeah. bought Mojang. Yeah. But by that point, when Microsoft did buy it, they obviously saw the benefits of making it, keeping it multi-platform, which is one of those things that you're sort of like, well, Xbox owns Minecraft, which is one of the biggest IPs in gaming, and mm -hmm. yet they keep that multi-platform, so why would you assume that Call of Duty, which is on the same level of Minecraft in terms of, like, marketability and, you know, just sheer, like, power. Yeah, power in terms of money in the yeah. gaming space. Like, why would that would be turned into exclusive? Mm -hmm. And they talk about, I think you're going to mention this, like, that the uh, uh, Minecraft on PlayStation, like, you can only play, like, the PS4 version on PS5 with Phil explaining to the uh, court, basically, like, well, Sony never gave us any, like, uh, development PS5s in order for us to optimize a version of Minecraft. So you kind of had to just, you know, 
go with it, this sort of version. It really wasn't on us. It was mainly on Sony, for whatever reason, not giving us those development kits. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's kind of like, you know, those showing like, why is Sony doing stuff like that, right? Like, yeah. why are they, you know, like, intentionally, or like, unintentional? Well, like, How hard do like, you feel this, this goes? They're, they're given a bit of a cold shoulder, shoulder in certain situations yeah. where it's like, why is that a thing? Yeah. And that's kind of, that's kind of like what what really caught the, caught the attention of a lot of people, right? Because a lot of us uh, are very you know uh, here we you know all, all three of us, you, me, Daniel, and uh, everyone here that we bring on are fans of a lot of stuff, gaming included, and we we are always excited for new games and stuff. And so when we started hearing this, it, it made us go and be like, okay. So what's what's going on with Sony, right? Why are they being so, um, you know, kind of like, and I, it's understandable. Like they're competitors; they don't want you know to to lose a leg up in, in the competition and stuff. Xbox has kind of said like, you know, we're, we don't kind of see that competition anymore, and like that's understandable because like considering how last gen was, it's like we're we're not gonna get those people back. <laughs> Yeah, like, heck, even uh, there's an argument that was being made by Xbox themselves in this thing was that, hey, we kind of probably lost the console war. We're, and they gave numbers, too. They were like, we're kind of third place yeah. in the sort of uh, in, in the sort of gaming industry. Yeah, the so, quote-unquote console war. Yeah, the quote-unquote console war. So we're not really in a position to, like, our, like, what we're doing right now is us trying to compete against Sony, basically. Yeah. Is sort of like one of their justifications where it's like Sony has gotten so big that like we have to force ourselves to do these sort of things in order to, you know, keep a leg up yeah. and try to compete with Sony who very much, like you said, like, you know, yeah, it's a competition in terms of like sales and stuff, but it seems like Sony is going, like, it's like actively like limiting like Microsoft's ability to compete against them, it yeah. seems. It's not a healthy environment is what they're making. Because ideally, if you want to do this sort of, like, healthy uh, environment of, like, competition of, you know, sales, of your of your both under, under the same thing, you try to make, you know, it, it has to be a healthy one, right? Because mm. at the end of the day, if you're, you have to, you know, benefit, you're both aiming for the same kind of demographic, You ideally you want them to come to you. Yes, there's the whole thing about, you know, constant exclusivity, and... I understand that, guys. I really do. There's, I understand why it's there, because you know, you a, a company wants you to come to their console. That's why we have the holy exclusives. But this is this is a different situation. It's more or less trying to screw over the other person. You're not making healthy competition. Because let's face it, Nintendo don't give a fuck. <laughs> well, yeah, like you know, Nintendo has always been sort of like kind of like not really into trying to compete with uh, Microsoft or uh, Sony in the gaming concept, at least in terms of like, oh, why does it make the best console graphically and like, po you know, no. power-wise? They're, you know, they've been like ever since like the Wii, they've been kind of on their own making, you know, interesting console ideas and stuff. And, you know, sometimes they work with like the Wii and the Switch and other times it's the Wii U and you're like, what the, what is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, you know, Nintendo obviously doesn't see themselves, like, they kind of know, like, we don't really see ourselves winning, because we have to invest all this time, effort, and energy to make super powerful consoles when that doesn't seem worth it to us. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, it's... You know, they found that, they, they, they struck gold with the Switch. Well, yeah, you know, they found, like, a gimmick that works, that people really enjoy, and, you know, they're sticking to it, and heck... Uh, speaking of the Switch, these court proceedings and stuff have also le basically essentially let information being like, oh yeah, um, we're pretty sure they're gonna make another. Uh, you know, like there is a next gen Switch essentially coming. You know, when we don't know, but on the point of like, well, the, you know, we know it's coming out because we have to work on. We have games that are gonna come out on that. Yeah, which is basically what, you know, Microsoft was saying. Like, yeah, you know, like, we're also working on stuff that will come out on a next-generation Switch. We don't know the name of it, but all we know is that it's there is a thing that Nintendo's working on. <laughs> you know, that's kind of, like, again, 
like funny thing about this is that we're getting information about stuff like some of it is kind of like speculated like when is Nintendo making a next you know console it does seem like it's been they've a while they've been talking about it for a while yeah we've and now by, by them I mean we because we've been speculating yeah and you know it's like okay now we have like actual industry people being like yeah it's, it's there's constant. something coming there's something and we're working and we're you know making games for mm-hmm. it you know that sort of thing because obviously games take a while to make and stuff yeah. And, like, I think one of the more interesting things, as well, is that we learned a lot of other things, like, uh, that Microsoft was, uh, potentially wanting to buy Bungie, Sega, and Square Enix at one point throughout yes, that the past couple years. Yes, that, that was, see, that was the idea. Uh, and we, so the Sega and, uh, Square Enix one, that, that lines up. Yeah, because there was always rumors of... Xbox wanting to buy, like, a big-name Japanese publisher so that they can essentially, you know, the whole idea is that, because Xbox doesn't do that well in Japan or any other, like, mm-hmm. Eastern market, so the idea of, like, buying a big Japanese publisher mm-hmm. or developer allow, essentially allows them to, like, get into that Japanese market and all that stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And it's not like there isn't a, a, you know, like, a demographic over there in, in these... It's just that, you know, they're they're very dedicated to Japanese owned products. It's kinda of like it's it's a mentality over thing over there. Mm-hmm. If I make any sense, you know. They don't like to use they like to like, you know, make their own stuff rather than, you know, get stuff that's important. And you know, that's, that's sort of the, the way they like to work. Uh but it's it, like I said, it's it, it's not like there isn't demographic. There have been in the past games that were exclusive only to Japan coming from an Xbox. Which uh, some which most people don't know about. And we even had games that were made by Japanese uh, developers for Xbox. I think there was a one game that was uh, I forget the name. I think it was called Lost Odyssey. It was made by the guy who made who who, who was no who, who made Final Fantasy. Uh-huh. So he he made like an exclusive uh, Japanese game for Xbox. And like I mean, there's only you and the, you and I know. There's been Japanese Killer Instinct players, and that was always a weird one. I mean, yeah, you know, um, that that's a, it just goes to show you that, it, you know, uh, there's a market there. Yeah. And Xbox definitely wants to get into there. And, yeah, like, the idea of Microsoft buying mm-hmm. Sega and or Square Enix is definitely interesting. Especially because, like I said earlier, uh, PlayStation has, you know. An been, exclusive right now. Has, does, has been doing a lot of exclusive stuff with uh with uh, Square Enix. Enix. I mean, obviously, Final Fantasy VII Remake, I mean, part of it makes sense because the original Final Fantasy VII was a PlayStation exclusive. Mm-hmm. You know? But, but there have always been rumors of, like, eventually uh, releasing it on another other There console. was, like, fine print in that first, in, in Final Fantasy VII Remake where it's, like, you know, arriving first on PlayStation or whatever, that sort of thing. Yeah. And I know, like, you know, it's on PC as well at this point. Yeah. But, yeah, there always kind of was, like, we sh- there could be like an Xbox version sometime down the line, right? Yeah. Because, and now we know why there isn't. Which yeah, it's interesting because when you look at it, there's also like I mean, Square doesn't seem like it has an issue with doing third party, I mean, doing like multi plat stuff. Yeah. Nowadays, I mean, heck, Kingdom Hearts was like like a de facto Sony ex- like you know PlayStation exclusive for like a while when it was first made. Yes, PS2 to PS3. Kind yeah, of. Yeah, you know, like all the PlayStation. Stuff. I mean, yeah, you had like the other like. Well, I mean, like you had like say the uh, Chain of Memories and like Screen Drop Distance on Nintendo consoles, but they're mainly handhelds. And yeah. you know, when you're talking about like the main like one and two yeah. thing, right? And for, for both, sleep, you yeah, know. which were both like PlayStation Two exclusives, and then they would eventually like port like a much more like. Yeah, they would get like the HD collection stuff on PlayStation as well, and it wasn't until like. When Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, where it's like, oh yeah, it's going to be on Xbox, and then... People were like, what? Yeah, and then a couple of months down the line, uh, all the HD collections and stuff also were on Xbox, and they were also put on the Switch, and too, you know? So, it, it, it seems like one of those interesting things of, like, how much money yeah. is Sony giving Square at this point to keep stuff, like, PlayStation exclusive? Mm-hmm. And not to mention, like, the recent Final Fantasy games were also... Like, 16 right now is essentially a PlayStation 5 exclusive. But 13 
14 was more PC. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure there were, like... There's probably a PlayStation version. I don't remember. Yeah, I think... I'm, maybe. I'm not I sure. Remember. The f 13 and 15 were very much, like... Multi-plat. Multi-plat. Which is something I remember, like, a lot of people being like, why? And there's, no one plays, like, Final Fantasy games on Xbox. Uh, I'm willing to play Final Fantasy games on Xbox. I like Final Fantasy. I feel like a lot of people would like the option of it being there, but obviously... Yeah. I mean, here's, and obviously the funny thing, too, is that Final Fantasy was originally a Nintendo exclusive when you think about it. The mm -hmm. first six Final Fantasy games were yeah. on it until uh, Square, you know, was like, hey, uh, listen, Nintendo, make something uh, with more power so that way we can uh, make our next big Final Fantasy game. And I was like, how about Nintendo 64 instead? And it's like, well, dang it. And then Sony comes out with the first place and it's like, hey, we got something powerful for you. You can put it on a disc. That sounds awesome. Let's make three of those and make it Final Fantasy VII. And then from there, obviously, yeah, you know. So, yeah, like, Square Enix does not ha you know, has had a history of doing exclusive stuff with Final Fantasy, but to say that people don't play it on Xbox is a little disingenuous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Considering how it's all been in all this stuff. And even the Sega one, that one, because, like, a lot of the Persona games were... Mostly uh, PlayStation, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I think, almost every single Persona game, except for, like, the spinoffs, which yeah. were, like, I think they were on Nintendo. But for the yeah. most part, yeah, Xbox never got the Persona games until recently, right? Yeah, because, uh, you know, they, they recently released uh, P, uh, Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4, Persona 5, um, and, like, some of the Shin Megami Tensei games are kind of, like, up in the air, to be honest. I'm, I'm not uh, sure. Shin Megami Tensei, I'm pretty sure, is... Still sticking to Nintendo for now? Yeah. Because I think uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five was on but Switch. The, the surprising thing now is that Sega, more or, le or more so Atlas, mm -hmm. is like now promoting stuff on Xbox. Yeah, like the past uh, summer, like past week, I think, right? Yeah. We had uh, Xbox's little uh, game announcements during this uh, June, right? Yeah. And they're like, uh, Persona 3 Remake. And they're like, <gasps> And then there was, like, another two uh, Persona 5 games, right? That was one. It was the Tactic, I think. Yeah, but the, but the big one. But the big one was, like, the, a new Atlas game that was coming out. Um, it's going to... I think it's going to be multiplayer as well. Yeah, but, it but, is. But, but, the, but the main selling point was, like, it's going to be first... It's going to be day one on Game Pass. Yeah. And it, and it was a Memento uh, Fantasy, I think it was called, which is, like, a brand new, like, no connection to Persona, Shin Megami Tensei at all. This is a straight final like a like a fantasy RPG game, and I'm like hell yes, sign me up. Yeah, and speaking of Game Pass, like that's sort of like the other big yeah. thing that's been talked about during this whole uh, court thing because uh, you know one of the uh, PlayStation higher ups was sort of uh, set on to stand that like there are you know publishers don't like Game Pass actually, and they see it as like. A negative that it's like we don't make as much money because you know. Yeah, it's like it's there's not much, apparently there's not much room. That's what his that's what he's saying, and that's and the, and we've been hearing like back and forth on like the idea of Game Pass in the in the past, right? Where like some people are like it's actually really great for indies, and then some people are like eh, it's like that that great, but re recently a lot of developers have come out and be like uh, actually no, Game Pass has actually helped us out a lot. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a very, you know, it depends on who you are yeah. kind of thing. And I feel like the fact that he didn't say, like, I mean, when you look at the court records and stuff, he doesn't mention any developers by name, mm -hmm. which I find kind of interesting, where it's like, okay, if you're saying that there's a lot of developers and publishers out there that are like, we actually don't really like Game Pass at all, we don't see any benefit, then why didn't you name some of them? Because it kind of just seems like, in in sort of a courtroom scenario, yeah, I feel you, you feel like you have to be specific about things, or else you're just kind of like it sounds like you're kind of making stuff up. Mm -hmm. You, you no can't evidence. be big. <laughs> yeah, without evidence, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is interesting to see. And to be fair, you know, Xbox Game Pass is like something that I think Xbox has been relying on a lot because it is a major selling point for the Xbox ecosystem, right? Yeah. You can pay how many much money you want. You have a, uh, access to all these games, basically, that you can, you know, it's a net, as I think we talked about before, it's like a Netflix for gaming, 
And if you really like some games, you can just straight up buy it if you want, you know. Yeah. Or if you, you know, just want to like just try them out, you know, you can do that too, you know. It's it's a it's a very consumer friendly type of a mm-hmm. you know app kind of thing, right? Like it, yeah. It, and and I've been using it a lot. I'm I'm being honest. I'm I'm using it to play the Persona games actually because I've never had a chance to play them growing up because they were always like on PlayStation. I'm not, not, I had a PlayStation, no, not going to lie, but I, there were games, there were some games that never caught my attention, like Persona, right? Like, how would I ever find out about Persona? Now, now that I'm, an, I'm a grown adult, I know about Persona, and I'm like, okay, let me try out Persona. They're all on Game Pass, I don't got to pay you extra money, it's right there. And I'm having fun with Persona 3 right now, and I'm going to jump on Persona 4. Mm-hmm. And I already played Persona 5, and I already enjoyed that. And so I'm investing in it, so I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. So like so, Game Pass in itself for me uh, as a consumer works, especially like there's a lot of games on there. I'm like, okay, I kind of want to try this game. This looks like game, this game looks like fun. But yeah, no, it's it's really interesting to see uh, uh, the the head of Sony sort of being this sort of vague about Game Pass, which is a thing that they're trying to compete now with in their own sort of way. Yeah, and uh, I mean this is the thing because Sony doesn't really have like mm-hmm. a Game Pass like service, and you know that's because I don't know it's it, it's an interesting thing, and mm-hmm. I think you could argue that maybe half the reason why Sony is so mm-hmm. you know like against the Activision Blizzard deal is because yeah that means there's gonna be a lot more of those big games on Game Pass, like you know, so it just makes. Xbox Game Pass is a much lucrative thing for the average consumer to buy into, and the only way to get Xbox Game Pass is, you know, to own something that's, you know, Xbox related, or, you know, get a PC, you know, mm-hmm. pretty much not buying into the Sony ecosystem, and, you know, that, that, that was big bad news for, for PlayStation, right? Yeah, and, like, they've been doing stuff like this, like, there's, there's, I think that one of the big things that just come that came out of this was the whole Starfield thing. So essentially, PlayStation was, or more or less, like you know, the heads of Sony uh, were this close to doing the same thing they did with, you know, Final Fantasy 16, uh, kind of Marvel Avengers. They're gonna essentially buy the the not the rights, but like. They were gonna, you know, give money to Bethesda to make it PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, and which is the reason why Xbox had to go in and be like, no, yeah, <laughs> we're like, buying the whole studio. Yeah, like that, like they, Phil Spencer, I think, and other Xbox people at the, you know, hearing were basically like, yeah, like Sony was in talks to potentially make Starfield a PlayStation exclusive. And, you know, Microsoft responded by just buying Bethesda and all their uh, stuff because they're like, we can't let that happen, mm-hmm. you know? Like, we can't, like, you know, because, like, they've been pretty much sort of uh, saying that they see themselves as a, you know, third place, having to compete with, you know, yeah. big ba- you know, PlayStation, which is, like, a bigger brand now and, again, you know, way bigger than Xbox, essentially, to them. So, like... So for Sony, to, you know, for PlayStation to come in and try to strong arm, like not strong arm, but like get a try to get a deal to make a new brand new IP PlayStation exclusive, like you know they were like, hey, you know, that's not good for us. That's pretty bad. We Especially need... a big game like Starfield. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a new Bethesda IP from you know the main Bethesda team. Yeah. You know? Like. It, it's gonna make a lot of money, and you know, Microsoft and Xbox understood that. Like, if that were to happen, then they would be put in a worse position. You know, mm-hmm. with every time that happens. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like one of those like, it's kind of yeah, seeing like all of whatever Sony and PlayStation have done with you know making these deals of like, hey, make this PlayStation exclusive, don't release this on Xbox. You know, that sort of thing. Is kind of coming full circle and like kind of biting them in the butt. Yeah. Because now Xbox, knowing you know, with the amount of money they have, we're just like, well, 
If they're going to be like that, fine. We'll just buy these studios and make sure mm-hmm. they make games for us. And now Sony is obviously kind of like, looking like, hey, he can't do that. Only, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's kind of the big hypocritical thing about it, right? And we've been saying a lot of stuff that makes them sound very hypocritical, but this is the big thing where that they want the exclusives solely for themselves. And a lot of people would say, well, Xbox doesn't have that many exclusives. Be that as it may, however these exclusives come out, right? Yes, Redfall was crap. But High Five Rush is also an exclusive for Xbox. And that was a good game. Psychonauts 2 was also... It's on PC too, right? Yes. Well, still being kind of like on a PC. Well, I mean, again, like we say, when we mean exclusive, we mean console, console exclusive. Because Sony, in recent you know years, yeah. has been releasing games like, I think, uh, Spider-Man, God of War, mm-hmm. Horizon Zero Dawn. On, Last of Us 2. On, well, I think it's part one. Part one, yeah. Uh, they've been releasing that stuff on PC. Yeah. Some, you know, it's a great fanfare. Others, like The Last of Us, eh, they yeah, needed, they needed yeah, yeah. some more time to report yeah. that. Um, but, yeah, you know, we're, when we're talking about exclusive, we're talking about exclusively mm-hmm. <laughs> exclusively on consoles, right? Yeah. Like, and, and, yeah, like, like, and that's the thing. Like, while there are some exclusives for Xbox, I think the problem with with it is that they're not as, like, recognizable as some of the PlayStation ones, right? And again, whether or not they come out being good or not, they have the thing, they have it, but they don't have the the marketability and like not and like the uh, legacy of it, right? Because like if you hear an ex- like if you hear God of War, I'm going for God of War, right? God of War, Psychonauts two, people are gonna go for God of War, even though Psychonauts is a fun game, a really fun game. So. It's, it's kind of like that. So they had no other choice but to do that. Because if they lose, to, if they lost Starfield, then what would be the point? <laughs> it was, yeah, it's more like Microsoft seeing the writing on the wall. Like, if they don't, you know, try to mm-hmm. stop this or, like, try to, you know, basically kind of like, Sony is going to continually do this with pretty much every third-party developer. Yeah. I mean, heck, uh something that came out from this was that uh, Activision, before it was bought out, I think during the P, you know Xbox One PS4 era, was kind of like, hey, Microsoft, uh, how about we get a different uh, revenue you know, cut of our, you know, of us putting our games on your system, or we're just not going to put our games on there anymore because Sony's been paying us a lot more, you know, kind of like. Oh, yeah. Which is like, you know, one of those like, well, crap, you know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like we said, like, it's, Sony's been coming out as very hypocritical about this stuff because we have also been seeing, we also got some interesting uh, emails from Jim Ryan, you know, the head of Sony. Uh, when we talked about this whole case last time, he was very much like, like oh, we can't let this happen, you know, Microsoft's going to make Call of Duty exclusive, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to be bad for the you know gaming market, all this stuff straight up like telling uh some activision people like i don't want this merger to happen mm. you know i want them to stop the merger yeah you know like that sort of like thing and right and from the emails we that have been shown in the court <laughs> the sony's detriment it shows uh, jim ryan being kind of a bit two-faced being like yeah we you know uh yeah sure if it happens you know it happens kind of sucks for us but i mean we'll be fine yeah, you have killed them. <laughs> well, I mean, he doesn't say that necessarily, but yeah. he's like, we know for a fact Microsoft is not going to make this exclusive. It'd be dumb make Call of Duty exclusive. It'd be dumb on their part. I mean, it kind of sucks it has to go this way if, if it has to end up like this, but we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Which is one, you know... Which, again, like, even Phil Spencer himself has said that, listen, when it, when it comes to exclusivity, they are, you know, case-by-case case basis. Not everything is going to be exclusive coming out from whatever studios we buy, whether it be Blizzard, Activision, Bethesda stuff. It is a case by case basis. There are going to be some games that are going to be, you know, for us, right? Hell, Hellblade, Ninja Theory, yes, obviously, it's going to be an exclusive to us. That's that's how it's going to be, right? Uh, 
Fable is going to be exclusive for us too. Call of Duty, if we get it, um, that's going to be for everybody. Minecraft is owned by us, but it's for everybody. It, because it's, again, case by case basis. I mean, yeah, and, you know, like, it, it's really more revealing of, uh, I guess, Sony. It's like one of those things where, like, it's like projecting almost. Yes. But it's kind of one of those things where it's yeah. a lot of projecting of, like, on, on Sony's case, where it's like, it seems like if this is a, if this is a reverse situation yeah. where Sony and PlayStation bought Activision Blizzard, they would absolutely make Call of Duty exclusive to PlayStation only. They would absolutely do all the things that Sony is claiming Xbox is going to do with their stuff. What? Right? No, they would never do that. It's kind of like one of the things, you know, like I said, it's kind of projecting, and it's like, it, it, because even like I think they even tried it like in the courts were like, mm-hmm. hey, so you know you're saying that, you know Xbox is willing to do this stuff. It's like well I'm not saying that, but it would be kind of weird that he would you know they would make it multi-platform in our opinion. It's mm-hmm. like. So are you saying that if you were in this position as the ex- if you were in their position you would do that and like and I think you went like uh, I'm not gonna answer that question because I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ I forgot about that because because like and it, it it's been a weird like like you know courtroom thing because yeah there was even a point where the the judge was like okay shut up you uh, lawyers you're just asking the same question over and over again we're done today. That was an actual thing that happened. The 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 the, the judge got mad. Yeah, because they kept on doing this thing with Phil Spencer as well, where they were like, "Can you like the SEC uh, lawyers were like, can you like positively confirm that you know Call of Duty will not be, you know, uh, Xbox exclusive?" And Phil is just constantly being like, "Yeah, that's our whole that was our whole plan to begin with. I don't understand why we have to keep on saying that." And the judge is like, "You've made your point already." Just drop it, you know, mm-hmm. like, w- w- let's move on to the next thing, because it, which is kind of one of those things where it's like, if you're making the judge kind of annoyed, you're, you've lost. You're kind of, you're, yeah, you're kind of losing your case here, because, like, not to say that you have to please the judge to, like, win a court case, because, I mean, that'd be kind of weird. You yeah. mean, just trying to bribe the judge. No, it's more like the judge is hearing all these <laughs> nice arguments. <one. laughs> nice one. You know, all, you know, probably hearing a lot of these arguments. And for the most part, it seems like they're running in in circles, and the judge is like, "Well, this is just not as strong as an argument as you're making here." No, kind of thing. No, and it's and it makes not only the FTC look bad, but also makes Sony look worse, because it it's again they're clearly you know trying to make it so this deal doesn't happen, because they're afraid of like losing that the audience, right? And it's understandable, you know, like, oh, I don't know, maybe they'll do it, maybe they'll But it, even if, if Jim Ryan is, like, the the, the head of, of Sony is, like, it'd be stupid to do that. And they're all acknowledging, yeah, no, that's stupid. We're not doing that. That should tell you something. Right? And it's and this has probably been the most interesting, like, week of gaming that the past two, I would say past two weeks now, that we've been, like, adhere to in terms of like the question of like exclusivity what should be exclusive because like well again while i understand the the need of exclusivity i feel like we also need to be you know not acknowledge like it would probably be better if all these games were accessible but we all have but we all like have our preferences right some people like xbox some people like playstation some people prefer pc because of so so and so right and that we shouldn't really be like I have said. And I get it. It's it's fun to be on a band side, on like you know on one side versus the other. But like, at some point we have to agree. Like we're here to game, dude. We're here to have fun. Like damn, I can't. I, I mean, I don't have a PlayStation. But that Final Fantasy 16 game looks awesome. I mean, I do have a PlayStation, so I could play it. But uh, I'm kind of busy on some other games right now. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I think the demo's out, right? That's yeah. the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, you know, it is a interesting sort of um, look into the case because mm-hmm. I mean, Microsoft and Xbox uh, are probably because I think they will be. Uh, I think they they've appealed the decision that the UK courts have done. Yeah. And that will be probably resolved later this uh, this year. 
but uh, this is like obviously completely different because um, it's mainly, uh, you know, like I said, the FCC is a U.S. Uh, based thing, and you know, it's their responsibility to look at this stuff. And yeah, it is. It's a uh, it's an interesting uh, scenario that's playing out where the regulators are coming off as like a little inept. Uh, a little inept, but also kind of like, not to say they're bought out by PlayStation, <laughs> but it feels a little like it. It feels it feels like they're they're really leaning hard into PlayStation's positioning and their concerns when looking at the case being laid out in their arguments. It's kind of like, well, if anything, you're just showing that PlayStation is super hypocritical, and if they were in this position, they would absolutely do the things that you're claiming Xbox is willing to do, but they haven't, yeah. you know? So it's, you know, it's one of those, like, kind of, like, things of just, well, this is just looking bad on the Sony front. Now, granted, yeah. I don't know if that will translate to, say, you know, people not wanting to buy Sony stuff anymore. I don't think that's going to really work out. No, no. I think, cause th at the end they, of the they have a, such a tight, secure, like, fan base that it's, like, even if they came out with a really bad game, they they'll be fine. Well, yeah, and also you know, I feel like a majority of people who play video games like are aren't necessarily dialed into this uh, whole FTC Microsoft no, court thing. No, 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 they're gonna hear certain things and then they're yeah, gonna... they'll hear the certain headlines. They're like, oh, that's interesting, but they won't dive into the details because at the end of the day, it's just. A lot of litigation and court speak, and you're yeah. gonna, you know you're gonna. This is the most court speak we ever talked. <laughs> yeah, this is like, well, shit. How do? Wait, hold on. How, what does that mean? Hold on. I need. Can someone with legal experience come in here, please? I don't understand how. Can of you this. dumb it down for me? <laughs> yeah. Not to say like the that like gamers are dumb, but it's 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 more of like this is probably the most like out of t like like I said, there there are people I feel like. They would hear this and they would un they will they would understand some of it, but some of it's also like, well, you know, this isn't that kind of stuff, right? Because I remember when it first start when the when the first start coming out about this stuff that happened with PlayStation, they were like, wait, so are they are they uh, saying that they did it because they need exclusives? I mean, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? And then it's like, oh no, it's because of this. Mm. It's because of like Sony being really weird about them ha that Xbox is having exclusives or trying to get, you know, reputable, you know, gaming companies to make exclusives, right? It's that, that, and, and, like I said, at first people were like, I mean, yeah, obviously uh, Xbox is going to get exclusive. I don't know what the big deal is. It's like, oh, it's this. That's, that's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Especially for Sony. Yeah, I mean, obviously at the end of the day, it's, you know, like, you know, it, it, it's very much like, you know, consumer rights and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's essentially what the FCC wants to do, but all of the stuff they're showing off is kind of like, well, this doesn't seem like you're doing much at all kind of thing, right? Yeah. Now, again, it's not, it's, at the end of the day, I think it is more or less because Sony, like I said earlier, like, Sony's, like, it's, you know, doing all these sort of things of, like, buying essentially buying out games to be playstation exclusive mm -hmm. from third-party developers and microsoft you know feeling the pressure knowing that they're not you know they've lost the console war essentially mm -hmm. uh knowing that like okay we have the capital to pull stuff off but are we willing mm -hmm. to do it and you know the starfield stuff being sort of uh revealed here it's like all right yeah i guess microsoft really needed to, like, felt that there had to be in a position of having to buy out certain larger developers and publishers because they're, like, I mean, this is our best chance of, like, keeping up with Sony because at the end of the day, Xbox Game Pass, you know, like, you know, people have been saying, does seem like the one thing that Xbox has done right. Mm -hmm. And who knows? Maybe, yeah, like I said, maybe that is scaring Sony of, like, hey, you know, Xbox has a good thing going with them and... That could mean, you know... Because imagine they made a really good exclusive. Well, yeah, like... <clears throat> not only do you have a good, like, Xbox exclusive, essentially, you have access to a lot of these, like, 
the third party the uh games are like really enjoyable for everybody he all for the low price of say 10 15 dollars a month and you're like suddenly we're in business you know yeah i'll, mm. I'll buy an xbox series s for like 399 or whatever and like pay like fifteen dollars a month for like Game Pass, which also comes with like multiplayer stuff or whatever. You to get all these games for basically free, mm-hmm. you know. And if I really like it and want to own it, then I'll just pay a reduced amount. And again, especially since like there's been up prices for games, because there some games aren't even sixty dollars anymore. Some of them are seventy. Yeah, you know, seeing that sort of price increase too of like first party games. I mean, Sony has like games that are seventy dollars. I think uh the Switch even like I think the the newest Zelda game is seventy dollars, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um yeah, seeing like the price like that slow increase of like games being costing seventy dollars and stuff, yeah, it does lead to uh Xbox Game Pass being like a preferable option. Mm. And you know that's sort of the thing you can commend Xbox on being sort of ahead of the market in that way and you mm-hmm. know it does seem like Sony is more threatened by the idea of, like, oh, my God, Xbox could potentially make a comeback and compete against us like they did during the 360 era. We have to put a stop to it now, now, now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we did lose that era. Well, I mean, yeah, like, the Xbox was very ubiquitous at the 360, I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, you know, the point is, like, this has been a very interesting court yeah. hearing that... I'm, you know, it's cool to hear, you know, like, some of these cool, like, interesting, like, oh, yeah, the Indiana Jones game, uh, yeah, it's gonna be Xbox exclusive, you know, that's kind of cool. Maybe new Switch coming out. Yeah, like, those sort of, like, you know, little secrets and leaks and stuff, but yep. it's more of, like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't feel comfortable making this reference, but it's like the court, it's like the gaming equivalent of, like, oh, hold on, I think of, one. like, <laughs> I think of one. Oh, like O.J. Simpson trial oh, case. I knew it. You know, because that was kind of like considered the trial of the century or whatever. Yeah. This seems like it has the same. Well, I mean, obviously, no one's been murdered or anything and being accused of not murder. Yet. Um, God, I hope not. God, yeah, that'd be very inappropriate. Um, but it's more sort of like the implications of this have some, you know, big you know, things of what could happen for the gaming industry and, heck, the tech industry in general, you know? Yeah, yeah I can totally see all that. And it's, and it's, and we'll, the, we'll figure, by the time this comes out, every, I think everything should have been set, should be set. Yeah, because it's like five days, and I believe of the time of this recording, they are discussing, like, it's the last day of it. And probably, yeah, by the time this video comes out, the judge overseeing this might come to the decision of, you know, hey, you know, I decide this way, and then, you know, who knows, maybe there might be some um, appeals, and then, you know, see this case continue to fumble around. But for the most part, I mean, yeah, obviously the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal is on hold because mm-hmm. of various things, and... The boy, do they need it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see yeah. where it all lays out by the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Like, because I feel like this, having more crazy, like, arguments and, like, court hearings and stuff is a bit... Because I feel like when it came to, uh, when Disney bought 20th Century Fox, Mm -hmm. you know, that had way less, like, I guess, drama dealing with it. Yeah, yeah. You thought it'd be more. Yeah. But they, they, they agreed, like, no, 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 we're just doing this. Yeah, it's like... You know, does that mean you're buying uh, the Fox Sports stuff? Like, no, we're actually just buying everything that Fox did uh, inter- uh, entertainment-wise. Uh, they can keep all the fo- you know, the news and the sports stuff. Mm. And that's sort of our deal. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. sure, go ahead. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not hurting the you're not hurting us that much. Can't believe the Predator is now uh, owned by Disney. I can't wait for him to meet the Disney princes. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Make that comic Marvel. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a very interesting uh, yeah. next couple of days, right? Yeah, and I don't think we'll make a, 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 a. Well, unless it's like a super big like, I feel like if you know the deal is yeah, approved, 
mm. and goes through, I think that's probably when we make another video of this sort of nature. Yeah. Because then at that point, it's like, you know, things have changed. Yeah. Substantially. Where are we going to go now? Yeah. You know? What, what does this mean for for Overwatch? What does this mean for LeBron's legacy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> sure <laughs> we'll see uh, but yeah I think it's a good point uh, place to end this episode on um, if you like what you heard be sure to follow us on all social media Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at the Kids Turn LeBron on Instagram on there there's a link to the podcast that's we're officially part of like all podcasts Google Podcasts Spotify, Pandora all the like and a link to the YouTube for all audience out there who want to put a face to the voice uh, be sure to like comment, subscribe hit the bell icon and we also have a link to our Patreon if you guys want to support us but yeah, if you guys enjoy, do enjoy this. Hopefully, um, well, maybe we'll talk about this again. Uh, if now we'll come back to the invasion. But yeah, no, this has been crazy for like the gaming world. There's a lot of stuff that makes us go whoa. That's what? Okay. And hopefully, you know, things are resolved and things, you know, are able to happen. But anyways, it's me, your boy Eli. Me, Joe. Guess have a good one. Peace.